Hey everybody, this is Chad Shapiro from Connect and I want to thank you for watching and ask you to share, like, comment, get the word out about Connect. We are connecting with people all over the world that are different life groups, thousands of people watching videos like this, many people are growing in uh, their connection with Jesus Christ and that's amazing using digital means not just to goof around and surf Facebook and do these different things but to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ to be able to share the gospel out there and to grow in our leadership abilities which is what we're talking about at the beginning of uh, in this series here we're going through an acronym called leadership with the word leadership and we did L for long term and now we're on E for being effective. This is part four. So if you miss the other parts, you ne definitely need to go back and listen to those. But before I get going too far, so excited that you're here. Um, I want to pray for us. Uh, and so if you'll bow your heads with me, Lord, I thank you for this uh, platform, this ability to be able to use the internet and digital means to be able to share your word, Lord. And I thank you that you guide and teach me in these words all the time and that we can share them now around the world, Lord. And I ask for people's hearts to be open and humble to be able to receive, for you to speak clearly to them, to help them be effective uh, in, the, in your kingdom, Lord, to help them be the hands and the feet to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So one of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 6, 33, which says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Which leads me to habit number seven of being effective. To be effective, we need to remain focused on the kingdom. Not our kingdom, not our little, you know, self-serving kingdom that I want to do all these things just for me. We have to be focused on the kingdom of God. Most Christians lose their way often because they don't pay attention to the way, meaning following Jesus Christ, following the Holy Spirit within you and I. We get self-centered. We make it all about you and I. We think about what we need. We don't think about serving. And leaders, we talked about it in past episodes, that they want to help others, cultivate the talents for others. And they ultimately need to follow the will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that is trying to guide you and I. We, if you think about it in the parable of the sower, Jesus describes uh, these people, the different kinds of way the word will result, what will happen, and the different results that happen when the seed is sown. I'm going to go through the scriptures with you. Matthew 13 and verse 33, if you can go there with me. Uh, I'll get, take you there so you don't have to go there necessarily uh, while you're watching. But in, in, it's the parable of the sower. And it says in verse 3, Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. As leaders, we know how that is, don't we? When we're trying to sow towards a vision, we're excited about it, we're sharing our heart, we're so ready to go, and then the birds come and eat it up. Some fell, verse 5 says, on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the sun, soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Others, in verse 7, it says that they fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And still others seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 uh, or 30 times, was, which was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. In this, it says in verse 14, this fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you will, ever, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever producing, uh, you will be ever uh, seeing, but never perceiving. 
For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. And again, if we want to be effective, this last point we're talking about is to be effective by hearing God, by focusing on the kingdom. This is verse 15. It says, for the people's hearts has become callous. That's my heart often. That's your heart maybe listening. And they hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they, may, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn, I would heal them. He will heal us. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears hear and your ears because they hear. For I truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. That was the prophecy from Isaiah. And in closing about this section, it talks about listening in verse 18 to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. So here comes the seed of God. The kingdom is right there. And if we don't understand it, if we don't grow in it, if we're not focused on it, then the evil one comes snatches away. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once, receives it with joy. That's how many of us are. We receive a word with joy. We're so excited. We're ready to go. I'm in. Let's make it happen. But since it says in verse 21, they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Have you faced trouble? Have you faced persecution? Have you had stress in different ways? We lose our focus, don't we, on the kingdom. We can't do that because in verse 22, it says the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but worry, the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful. And I know that you and I have been there where the, 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 the fears and also the lures of this world choke out the word and make us unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word, understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times. We have to be able to focus on the kingdom. We have to be effective. We have to be rooted. And can you use Connect to be? I mean, we have Clubhouse that we meet on Tuesdays, Zoom on Wednesdays at noon with people from around the world, Zoom on Thursday uh, in the evening time, and different groups. I can't wait till it's every hour of the day where somebody even like you is sharing the word live or giving some kind of video from around the world to inspire and encourage other people. Guess what? When we do that, we focus in and we start to grow more in our leadership ability and our effectiveness. Can you do that more today? Can you focus more on that today? And then everything else will start to take shape and go forward. This man was not even uh, focused on uh, 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 on it, it, this talking about the differences between focusing on the world and focusing on on good soil, fertile soil. That's you here listening today. You are fertile soil. You can make it happen. You can go forward, but we've got to understand these emergencies, these stresses of life, these things that come to take the seed and to pull it out and to ruin you and I, that's part of life. You're not the only one that feels those things. You're not the only one that has those things. Effective Christians learn to stay focused, to stay tight. And I, you know, it reminds me, and I'll close with this idea of being an orphan spirit, because all the way since Adam were belling in the garden, Adam and Eve, there was an orphan spirit. They could have been underneath the covering of God, but they broke free to be their own little God. And, 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 and you and I have that that's been passed on to us forever. So sometimes when we get to be in, in a, a chance like this to serve one another and connect, we don't do it. I heard a saying in ministry, it said, if we don't, if we don't operate it, we don't cooperate with it. Oh man, that's rough, right? If we don't operate it, if we don't own it, if it's not ours, then I'm not going to be all in. That's that orphan spirit that holds you and I back. 
And to be effective, we got to be focused on the kingdom. To be effective, we got to be focused on the kingdom and kingdom things like this opportunity that we have connect. You can be connected just a little bit, right? Where you're barely involved and the seeds are being sown and the, and the vultures and the birds and the, the sun is scorching them and everything is happening to those seeds. Or could you be that fertile soil that allows those seeds to take place? Could you come every single day? Could you be a part of it in what we're looking forward to doing around the world? Yes, you could. And we want you to do all of those things with us here today. We want you to be able to focus on the kingdom of God, to be effective. And again, it doesn't mean you have to quit your job and do all those things. Because guess what? If you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added to you. You'll run better businesses. You'll be able to serve more in nonprofits. You'll be able to show your, your people around you, especially in leadership. How are you and I going to show people how to follow our lead if we can't follow the lead, if we can't submit humbly to Christ? We've got to be able to submit. I think about that with my family. I think about that in my business. I think about that in ministry. If I submit and follow really, really well, then when I share a message about, hey guys, we need to take a right here. We need to take a left here. We need to do this. They know I'm not just trying to, you know, just take it all for myself. They go, they should be able to see my life and say, he follows really, really well. And he's asking me to do something to serve well, I, and I should I should be open to that. But are we doing that? Are we underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ? To be a truly effective, this is our opportunity. But you know what? If we haven't given our life to Christ, then we won't be effective underneath him, will we? When I first became a Christian, I was out of the business world and I loved the self-help and the ideas and all the practical Christian living, but that can only take us so far. It's not really deep soil, is it? It goes down a little bit and then if it gets a little tough, which you faced tough times before, haven't you? Then all of a sudden we say, no thanks, too hard, I give up. But let me ask you, did Jesus give up? When it was tough for him, did he quit? When he he could have, hey, remove, he asked, remove this cup from me, but he didn't. He said, not my will, your will be done. And I have to be able to fight through when it's not easy, when it's not convenient. I have to stop thinking that it's easy for everybody else because it's not. Their leadership journey is not easy either. You might be watching their commercials, their testimonials or something, and it just sounds so effortless that they're so blessed, but you miss the grind and the hard work that they're having to do. I don't want to be like that. What about you? I don't want to take for granted the hard work, the sweat, the tears, the focus, the money, the time, the, the, the rejection that other people had to face to be successful, that I want it easier than them? No way. I want to be able to understand and have clear expectations that I should be willing to pay that price too. But when I was just watching this Christian life and not really in love with Jesus, it was just, hey, I like those ideas, but they weren't attached to a, a person that was in the flesh that lived those lot that lived that life here on earth. But when I finally started to know Jesus, when I finally gave my life to Jesus, then all of a sudden you see what happened to all those principles? All of a sudden they were more than feel good kind of concepts. Those became commandments, rules to live by. And again, not a legalistic rules to live by to earn my way into heaven because I realized that because Jesus died on that cross, and he was resurrected three days later, I was forgiven. I was being, I was now able to have heaven in my future, to be, uh, have eternal life without me doing all those commandments. But he did it for me, the price that he paid for me. First John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. 
so I can come before you and be excited to share the word of God because he loves me. And because he loves me, I want to share that love. We love because he first loved us. I follow those ideas even though they're not fun because I think about him on the cross and I think about what he did for me and I think will I do that for my wife will I do that for my girls will I do that for my friends will I do that for my ministry will I do that for my whatever is in front of me will I do it the way he did it for me but maybe you haven't made that commitment to Jesus Christ maybe you think all this stuff around you is by accident wow what a depressing thought right that you're an accident this world's an accident there's there's just just so some random chance and that none of this is divinely created man that's got to be rough right no wonder we get so depressed when that's thought a thought that goes through the world but i think you know better deep down in your heart and when that when you start to realize that thing in your heart that feels empty and depressed and frustrated is to be filled by you seeking him by growing in the kingdom by filling it with him all the way you'll see that all of a sudden you're not sitting there depressed lack of purpose you will sometimes feel that way but guess why you're feeling that way you're filling that hole up with something besides him you're not seeking first the kingdom of god and his righteousness because if you did you would all of a sudden start to feel like, whoa, man, even though my car messed up, these people didn't even have cars. And they were praising and worshiping Jesus. Even though I lost my family member, they lost their family members too, didn't they? I'm not trying to diminish anybody's pain. But we will see, if we're studying the kingdom, we'll see it's not an easy walk and these people still praise God. Can you and I do that today? Can we see that this world was created divinely, that it was created by God who then said, you know what, you can't walk with these rules. You won't live up to these rules. I need to do it for you to atone for your mistakes, to the sins and the mistakes that you have. Once and for all, I'm gonna send my son down there in the flesh, in the flesh, and he will die on the cross. And he was resurrected three days later. And guess what, they saw him. They were weak, they weren't effective. They were like me and you, right? When we're running spiritually empty, they were not effective at all and then guess what happened they saw him resurrected and they went in front of people and they said you all these meek quiet little people that were running scared all of a sudden were speaking boldly and said we saw him you crucified him we saw him he was raised from the dead and they gave their lives for him for what they saw how they walked with him and we, me and you need to be able to go, oh gosh, is God trying to get me to see that truth and give my life to him today? And I think he is. I think he is. He was here. He died. He rose again three days later. So that you, if you put your faith within him and believe in your heart, and I know sometimes that's hard because you don't see that every day, do you? But you are a miracle yourself. Just because you know that other people have been born and this is the only one that was dead and then rose like we saw him and, and now is sitting with God. I know that can feel so amazing, but you are amazing how you were born and created, how you think, walk, talk, all these things. You are a walking, talking miracle yourself. The sun being as far away from the earth as it is, is a miracle. If it was closer, we'd be burnt up. If it was further away, we'd be frozen. It's a miracle. There are miracles everywhere. We just try to be our own little gods, don't we? And try to control everything. But today is possibly your day. So if you will bow with me and pray this prayer, you, life won't be the easiest life you've ever had after this prayer, but you will be forgiven and you will have eternal life in front of you. And so let's do that. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my friends today. And everybody repeat after me and say, Dear Lord, I know I have been a sinner. I thank you for dying on that cross for being resurrected three days later. 
so that I could be forgiven, so that I could have eternal life. And now I choose to follow you. I leave my sins behind and go forward. And I thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, we're going to cover a lot more on leadership. And I know you might be thinking, how am I a leader? How am I a leader? Especially in Connect, which is just getting started. You're a leader by just sharing, posting, liking, commenting, being here. That helps enormously. I know many people haven't started a platform like this before, so they don't know. They think, I'm, I'm not a leader because I don't have my tie on, I'm fancy or whatever. I'm not a leader because I mess up and make mistakes. Every leader does the same messed up stuff too anyway. And we all have to start somewhere. So you are a leader. You're a leader even if one person watches you. And guess what? More than one person watch you and are influenced by you. You are a leader. And so I thank you for your help to help lead connect. I thank you for liking and sharing comment. I thank you for going to the website, getconnected.church and to uh, see uh, where you can sign up there for free and you'll get access to the right now, a media account, your own for free. It's like the Netflix of Christian videos from uh, right now media. It's connects own branded, tools for you to watch these incredible videos. You'll be able to donate there and your money is so needed. I'm sure you can imagine as we launch this out around the world, the time, the effort, the technology, the missions, the people that we can support, we would love your donations. There's a link right on there to be able to donate and stick with us and go grow with us. And maybe one day you will be sending in videos and featuring different words, the scriptures and different things that God has given you to be a blessing to the world. Let's fight forward. This is just the beginning. We talked about being L, right, long-term, and E for being effective. And we took our time. We're gonna take our time with this. And uh, really, really, I think if you go back and listen and learn and take notes, you will learn so much as, my, as I have been blessed by this information. Take care. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Let's go make it happen. Bye for now.